I'm Heather Hartman, private chef and holistic health coach. I spent years of my life trying different food trends to be healthy, only to realize all I needed to do was get back to the basics. Starting with foods that were whole and natural, I learned to eat the way nature always intended. That's when everything changed. Now, food is my passion, and I want to prove that healthy doesn't need to be complicated or bland. That's so delicious. It looks so tropical. <laughs> Nothing like sneaking a bite of chocolate. So good. With tasty recipes and unexpected home hacks, we are getting back to a life that is fresh, simple, and healthy. Within the first five minutes of waking up, I try to connect to nature and make sure that I am outside. I love to smell the flowers on my walks. I love to feel the sun on my skin, the air. It feels so nice to do this first thing in the morning. I also try to do this at the end of my day as well. One of my favorite things to do on the weekends is walk to the farmer's market, see all of the beautiful produce from our local farmers, um, talk to them, see the wonderful plants it is one of my favorite things to do. Also, when I am at the beach or at a park, I love to take off my shoes, feel the grass on my feet, get some grounding in. Just that connection to nature is so important, regardless of what type of area you're in. I love to get my hands on everything that I'm cooking. Um, so it's not only having my feet on the sand or in the grass, but really, taking these beautiful vegetables and fruits and really touching them, feeling their texture, feeling the ridges on their skin, feeling their weight. So it's not just eating the food, it's holding it and experiencing it in another tactile way. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make agua chili. It's one of my favorite recipes. I first had it a few years ago when I had dinner with my dad at this Mexican restaurant and knew I had to make it. If you've never heard of agua chili, it's kind of like ceviche, except for instead of the shrimp being cooked in the marinade for a few hours like ceviche, the shrimp is marinated in lime and then a chili sauce is poured on top of the shrimp and the vegetables. It's also eaten right away, whereas ceviche is left out for a few hours. So this recipe is made in a few parts. First, we're gonna marinate the shrimp with some lime. Next, we're gonna make the salsa. There's cilantro, some peppers, lots of lime, white onion, a good pinch of salt. And then we're gonna dice some cucumbers, avocado, put that in the bowl with the shrimp, um, pour the sauce over, and then we're gonna add some toppings. For the toppings, I have this beautiful daikon radish and then this watermelon radish. The purple from the daikon and then the pink from the watermelon are just gonna pop on this dish. You're gonna see, it's gonna be so pretty. And then for a drink, we're gonna make something else that's super colorful. We're making a blood orange margarita. It's one of my favorites and it's gonna look so delicious. So first what we're gonna do is take the shrimp and pour lime juice all over it and let it sit out for about 10 to 15 minutes while we get the salsa ready. All right, so this shrimp has already been um, de-veined and does not have the shell on it. So we're gonna cut the limes. We're also gonna add a really good pinch of salt to this dish. So the lime is actually gonna cook the shrimp while we're getting the salsa ready. So citrus is an acid and is a great way to cook um, shrimp, also scallops without using any sort of heat. The acid just cooks the shrimp if it's been marinating for um, long enough. And I'm gonna add enough lime juice to just cover, fully cover the shrimp. So this is almost to the top, but I really want all of that shrimp covered so that even the top of the shrimp gets cooked. Just like, it's like ceviche. So like ceviche, you 
um, the shrimp is cooked in the marinade. The only difference is that with ceviche, it's in the marinade for hours. Instead of this, we're gonna keep it in the lime juice for about 15 to 20 minutes with some salt and then add the salt, the sauce after. So I'm gonna give a good pinch of salt and just mix that through. And we're gonna set this to the side as we make the agua chili. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on the agua chili. This is so easy. You're gonna get a whole bunch of cilantro, stems and all, throw it inside of your high-speed blender, add about a good teaspoon of garlic puree. Next, we're gonna add half of a white onion, just the whole thing. Not the skin, obviously, just the whole half of the onion. Remove the skin. And just to give the blender a little help, I am gonna cut this half of the onion into quarters. Pop that in. We'll do a good pinch of salt. And now we're gonna juice some limes. I'm gonna do about four limes, then check the um, taste, and if we need to, we'll actually add the lime juice that the shrimp is in. It's totally safe. Okay. So I would say this is about a cup of limes. Um, if you have smaller limes, then I would just make sure that you measure about um, a cup or three-fourths of a cup of lime juice. Oops. So I have the onions in here, I have the cilantro, I have some lime. Now we are gonna add some jalapeno in the serranos. I'm gonna add one full jalapeno and I'm gonna start with one serrano, taste it, and then see if I need to add the second. Those are very, very spicy, so I wanna start off slow and then see what it's like and then add more heat if I need to. I'm gonna put on a glove. Again, the gloves are just your best friend when you're working with really spicy dishes. All right, take the stems off of your hot peppers, slice them in half, and we're gonna remove the membrane and the seeds because I don't want this to be too spicy. Um, if I was making ceviche, then I would probably leave the membrane and the seeds on because the dish would get more mild over time, but because agua chili needs to be eaten right away, I'm gonna remove everything. All right, so the whole jalapeno is in there. And then here, oh, this is so spicy. The, the fumes hit the back of my throat. This is a lot of heat. Okay, so all of the ingredients are in the blender. We are going to liquefy everything. All right, let's blend everything. Now we're gonna taste it and see if it needs more salt um, or more spice. This definitely needs a little bit more salt, but the lime and the heat is definitely there. I don't wanna put any more um, spice because again, we're gonna be eating this right away. And it's nice at first, but the spice is already in the back of the taste, so. I'm not gonna add any more um, peppers. All right, so that should be totally mixed up. Now let's just taste it. Oh my God, that's so good. It's just super fresh. 
very bright. It's gonna go perfect with the shrimp, the creamy avocado, the cucumber. Let's start with the toppings. <laughs> I'm gonna put this to the side. Okay, so next we're gonna make a really quick pickled red onion. Um, it's not gonna be fully pickled, but it'll be perfect for this dish. So what I like to do is just julienne in the red onion. And you can use a larger one if you'd like, but for this size, I'm gonna use a pretty small red onion. And we're gonna cut it in half, both sides, remove the skin. And then remove the skin and then just get chopping. Turn that around. It's okay if um, it's still, it's, you know, it's not too thin. You don't want it super, super thin because I still want the crunch of the red onion and the vinegar and the salt will break it down within um, just a few minutes. So I like to keep it maybe about a quarter of an inch thick. All right, so we're just gonna put this into a small bowl. And this is how I do a very quick pickle. I sprinkle it with some salt. Then I take red wine vinegar, some apple cider vinegar, and some hot water. So we wanna use hot water because it'll help break the red onion down. And you wanna put enough for the liquid to just cover the red onion. And now we're gonna just set this aside along with the shrimp and start chopping the cucumbers and the avocado for our dish. Okay, let's start plating. I'm gonna use about half of the cucumber um, and we are going to just roughly peel it. It's okay if there's still some green peel on it. Um, the color actually looks kind of cool, I think, when there's a little bit of skin left over, but I'm gonna to try to take most of it off. And just put that to the side. Cut the stem off. We're gonna cut it in half lengthwise and then cut both of these in half lengthwise. So essentially we're cutting it into quarters. And then what we're gonna do is start chopping. I want this to be pretty thick because I want that crunch of the cucumber. Um, so we're gonna do about, I would say about an inch rounds. Okay, and we're gonna add all of that to the bottom of the bowl. Now we're gonna take the avocado and do the same and I'm gonna just dice half of the avocado and put it in the bowl with the cucumber I think it's easier to dice in the skin just be careful that you don't go through the skin and accidentally cut your hand I have heard stories of that happening all right so scoop this avocado out so as you can see, we have half of the cucumber and half of the avocado in this bowl. The shrimp looks amazing. I can tell that it's already cooked. It's nice and firm, slightly pink. So we're just gonna remove it from the marinade and put it straight in the bowl. All of it. All right. And now what we're gonna do is um, cut the watermelon radish and the daikon for the topping, and then the rest of the cucumber and avocado for the topping. But already just this dish alone is something that I would wanna eat without any of the other stuff we're about to put on it. It's gonna be so delicious. Okay, so here I have the watermelon radish. I'm gonna cut it in half lengthwise. This is by far the prettiest radish. It's my absolute favorite. Now we're gonna cut the daikon radish. You'll see this one is equally as pretty. Oh my God, this is so gorgeous. 
Look at this color, so gorgeous. Just the pink of the watermelon radish and the purple of the daikon. Oh, just my favorite. I love using colorful food when I cook. So we have the purple daikon sliced in half and then the watermelon radish. I am gonna slice the daikon in half again. So essentially just quarters, just to make it um, a little bit easier because it is so wide. Cut the stem off and we're gonna use the mandolin to help us cut the daikon and the watermelon radish. These are so pretty, just really pretty purple fans. They're gonna look so beautiful on this dish. Again, I don't like to get too close and risk it, so I have about an inch left of the daikon and I am going to put it off to the side because I don't wanna cut my hand. Same thing with the watermelon radish. I am going to just cut um, the end off. I'm actually gonna go a little bit farther. You can see here, the pink actually doesn't start um, until a quarter of an inch more. So I'm gonna cut just this part, the, uh, the white part, so that I get the, the full pink. Oh my gosh, these are so gorgeous. It looks so tropical. <laughs> All right, I'm actually gonna do the rest of them. So I'm gonna do half of the daikon and the whole watermelon radish for this dish. Oh my gosh, look at all of these colors, the purple, the pink, the white, so gorgeous. We're gonna put half of this in the dish and then use the rest for the topping. And for the topping, so I'm gonna have the half of the radishes for the topping. I'm also going to just dice up the rest of this avocado into some big chunks and do the same with the rest of the cucumber. Okay, go this way. Again, it's totally okay if some of the skin remains. All right. Cut this lengthwise, then lengthwise again, and into about one inch chunks. Okay, perfect. So next we're gonna add the agua chili sauce to the bowl of all of our fresh ingredients. <laughs> oh my gosh, this looks so good. And you wanna add most of the agua chili because again, it's more of a saucy, like gazpacho-like dish. So you really wanna add a lot of that marinade. So as you can see, there is a ton of the sauce, all of the chopped veggies, and now we're gonna top it with even more chopped veggies. It's gonna be so delicious. So I'm gonna add just a few more of the cucumbers, some of the avocado, the diced avocado. Make sure that it's fully spread all over the dish. A lot of that watermelon radish and daikon, some more daikon. There really is no rhyme or reason. All of these flavors will go so well together. Um, we're gonna use some of this cilantro just for extra freshness all over. All right, this looks so delicious, but I know I'm gonna need a drink when I eat this. We are gonna make the best blood orange margarita. But first, let me show you how I compost all of these ingredients. One of my favorite things to do when I cook is to compost. I take all of the scraps and put it in a large bowl as I'm cooking. 
And then when I'm done, I just take everything that's in this bowl and I put it in a compost bin. If you live in a home, you probably have a huge compost bin. If you live in an apartment, um, there are services in your local city. Like for example, Denver, we have a company called Scraps that will deliver a small compost bin to you and then pick up the compost once a week or once a month, depending on the size of your home. Um, I just love this. I feel like I am doing something good for my community and something good for the environment. I really like to limit what I put in the landfill because if you put food in the trash can, it will emit greenhouse gases. I try to do everything that I can to just protect our community and protect the environment. So I just put everything in the compost bin, close the lid, and yeah, this will all get picked up in about a month. So another thing I like to do is when I go grocery shopping or have my groceries delivered, I ask for no compost bags. The majority of the things that we put in the compost or in recycling still ends up in landfills. So I really try to limit as much waste as possible. Um, yeah, so all of these produce I purchased did not use produce bags. They'll be totally fine. I'll give them a little rinse as I would anyway um, if I was using a compostable produce bag and put them in my fridge for later use. No need for produce bags. So now that the agua chili is made, we're gonna get started on the blood orange margarita. It's gonna be so refreshing with the agua chili. First, what we're gonna do is add some lime zest to the salt, just to make the salt a little bit more special. I have one lime. We're gonna use a microplane to remove all of the zest. And then we are gonna mix the zest and the salt together. So that looks good. And then just give it a little stir with your hands. It'll give just a nice limey um, hint as you're drinking the blood orange margarita. So I have some salt with some lime zest here. I'm gonna put some of the blood orange just around the rim of the glass so that the salt and the lime attaches as much as possible. That looks so good already. I've sliced some of the blood orange into really thin slices. It's about an eighth, eighth of an inch thick. And I'm gonna slowly start to build this around the glass. So I'm gonna put a, one right in a little uh, ice to keep it there and just keep working. Let's see, and maybe we'll do one more on this side. I first saw this done at a restaurant um, when I was living in Napa. I went to culinary school there and I thought it was so pretty and so cool. I have been doing this ever since. It's been almost 10 years. This looks so pretty. I love this glass and this drink. Okay, so now we're gonna mix all of the ingredients in this glass with the remaining ice. I have a good shot of tequila, my favorites. We're gonna do a squeeze of a whole blood orange. Right, get all of that color. Maybe I'll just a little bit more. We'll use the rest of this. And then we're gonna do a whole squeeze of lime. Look at this color already, it's so pretty. My favorite colors all day. We're just cooking with my favorite colors all day. Okay. And now um, we're gonna chop this or slice the lime in half and squeeze the whole thing. This will just add the brightness. Um, the citrus is great, but it doesn't have that like brightness that tequila really needs. And now we're gonna add just a little bit of maple syrup. You don't need too much. Add a little bit and then if you think it needs more, you can always add some. We'll mix it really quickly. And pour 
into the glass. This is gonna go so well with the agua chili. It's so pretty, so refreshing. I love blood oranges. If you can't find blood oranges, definitely just use regular oranges. It'll be just as good. I am so excited to eat this dish. The agua chili, just super bright with the cilantro, the lime, the creamy avocado, the crunchy cucumber, all of the beautiful colors of the radishes, and then my refreshing blood orange margarita. I am gonna go on my patio, enjoy the sun, and just chillax for the rest of the day. Cheers! Oh my God, so good. You're gonna love it. <laughs>